Hello everyone, this is Robert coming at you with another video. For today's video, I made a tin can rocket stove. And my sideways tin can stove fits right in here, right inside the main body of my tin can rocket stove. Then I have my feeder tube. Now I'm using a Progresso Progresso 18.5 ounce for the main body. Then the Campbell's 10.5 ounce for the feeder tube. And they all fit right into each other. Feeder tube and my sideways rocket stove. Or my sideways stove. I'm not too sure if this is really considered a rocket stove, but still a stove. To me, a stove. So, put this one in the, the hole. Then when you're feeding the sticks in, it just falls right through to the bottom. And all the ashes collect right in there. So, this is my first tin can rocket stove. So let's go cook something. So here I am in the woods. Today, I'll be cooking bannock bread on a stick. Now, for some of you who do not know what bannock bread is, it's very easy to make. First, you have the bannock mix, which includes one cup of whole wheat flour or white flour, whichever you prefer, one teaspoon of bacon powder, a quarter teaspoon of salt, or more if you would like, two tablespoons of powdered milk, one tablespoon of oil or butter. I have that in one of these aspirin bottles. That's all I have right now. And half a cup of water to, to mix in with the bannock bread. And I'll explain the process of adding the water because it's very, I don't know, it's, if you put too much water in, it'll be like pancake batter and won't be a dough. But I'll explain to you in a minute. Now, this was originally called Indian bread or settler's bread. And they usually added bacon grease to this mix, but I added raisins. So, first thing I need to do is get my tin can rocket stove lit up. So, I'll load the camera and I'll get this going. Now I have this little bag of goodies from my friend Quint Quentin. Now I'm gonna take some of this waxed kudzu fiber, put it in there, use my flint striker, Now I got this. This is an old TV antenna that I found on the side of the road. So I just went over and grabbed the antenna. It's gonna be good for a fire bellow so I won't have to put my face near the flames. So while that's getting cooked, while that's um, 
getting flamed up. I'm gonna start adding my water. Now, you have half a cup of water. I'm using a plastic bag so it will be easy to mix. Now, when you do this, only put half of the half a cup of water in, not the whole thing at once. Leave a little bit water in, in the container. Because you have to remember, you're gonna be adding the olive oil or um, cooking oil to this mixture. So this will also add to water. Let's just put a little bit of oil in here. Close up the Ziploc bag and you stop mixing it. You just add a little bit more water. You don't wanna get it too watery so it'll be like pancake mix. You want it to be a nice dough consistency. What's great about a Ziploc bags, you can turn it upside down and nothing will come out. This is what you want, a nice dough consistency. I'm not too sure if I put a little bit too much dough in here, but. Try to mix this up some more so I can get it on the stick. Now I saw one YouTuber, one YouTube channel that said to heat the stick over the fire. Just heat the stick up. 
So when you wrap the bannock bread around the stick, the stick, the warm stick will heat up the bannock bread from the inside out. You don't want to burn the stick, you just want to try to heat it up. Now you take the banning bread. And kind of get it around the stick. Try to get it on the stick as good as you can. Now you just roast it over the fire. Now, I already made bannock bread at home. I did pretty good with it. Getting the consistency right of Getting the consistency right and baking it and stuff. I put it in a pan at home. Not too sure if I really get the consistency right on this one in the woods. I'm not too sure if I got the consistency right in the woods. I mean, this is the first time I'm trying to bake this in the woods on a stick. It's a lot easier in a frying pan, that's for sure. It's a whole lot easier in a frying pan. Next time I'm gonna bring my little frying pan mess kit. I'm gonna keep it in my haversack. So if I, if I ever wanna make bannock bread, I'm gonna have a pan with me. Well, <laughs> not the best looking bannock bread there is, but this is the first bannock bread that I make in the woods on a tin can stove.
not bad. It's better making it's better than making it on a frying pan on a stove and at home. Pretty tasty with raisins in it. You know, it's kind of blackened because I had to write over an open flame. But I'm definitely gonna bring my little aluminum, like like one of those camp mess kits, frying pans. Keep it in my haversack, small enough to fit in my haversack. So if I ever, ever want to do this again. I'll be able to just put it in a frying pan and fry it up instead of trying to put it on the stick and falling off and having to wrap it around. Well, I'm just going to keep practicing on making bannock bread, making the consistency correctly so it won't be so watery like a pancake or too powdery that it, too powdery that it's like all over my hands and everything. Because last, the other night when I cooked bannock bread at home, I did it pretty good, and tasted very good with lasagna, so, well, I'm going to keep practicing on making bannock bread in the woods, I'll probably even start doing other cooking in the woods, I'll keep practicing on shelter building, fire making, especially in my tin can rocket stove and all other forms of bushcraft because practice is the key to survival. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video of my first bannock bread cooking in the woods. If you like my videos, please subscribe, hit the like button, comment, and share my videos. Till next time, this is Robert. Thank you for watching.